Hey, if you've been trying to figure out how to build a trailer to transport your smoker on, this episode of the Pitmaster Secrets Podcast is for you. Hey, I'm Frank Cox, and for the last 10 years, I've had SmokerBuilder.com, and I've been teaching people how to build smokers and how to cook on them. Anyway, this episode of the Pitmaster Secrets Podcast was taken from one of our first live Q&As we did back in, I don't know, September or so. And uh, this one here is going to focus on all the stuff that you need to know about how to build a trailer and some things you need to keep in mind for your smoker. Anyway, uh, if you don't mind, give this channel a like and a subscribe. And while you're at it, go down in the description for this podcast and you'll see a, uh, a link that'll take you over to the forum where you can sign up to join us on one of these calls. Anyway, season four is right around the corner. We're going to have a change of scenery and, uh, you know, have some better topics and stuff like that as well. So stay tuned, and I can't wait to see you on the other side. Enjoy the video. You're listening to the Pitmaster Secrets Podcast. Also, I wanted to touch on your trailer thing and the baffle plate thing as well. So on the trailer, my favorite way to decide how big of a trailer I'm going to build is depending on number two things first. Number one, am I going to stand on the trailer and cook or am I going to stand on the ground and cook? That's number one. Number two is what all equipment do I need on it? Like, do I need a fryer? Do I need these other things? You know, like a sink and stuff, right? That's going to help me determine how long the trailer is. And then for wood storage and things like that, that's the length of the trailer. And then the third thing is uh, what size axle can I get easily? So if you're doing a 250 gallon cooker, if you don't have a lot of stuff stored on the trailer, like, a, like wood storage is probably all right. But when you start trying to put a lot of other stuff on the trailer, you might have to go heavier on the axle weight. So you can do a, you can get away with a 3,500 pound single axle on a 250 gallon size or smaller cooker. If you get into a 500 gallon, just because of the weight of the tank and the amount of iron in the pit, you're going to have to be about double the actual weight of the cooker. That's not because the trailer won't hold it. That's because of bridge aprons. Nobody can pour a road no more. So what happens is uh, you uh, wind up going about 6,000 pounds on a 500 gallon trailer. Um, I always overbuild, like you were just saying a minute ago, Benny. You're going to wind up with like a uh, uh, like you're wanting to go heavier on your metal. You're wanting to go heavier on things like that just because you want it to be the best you ever had, which makes total sense. So I start out at like a 6,000 pound axle for myself. And I look at how wide I can get on spring centers. So you get a hold of e-trailer is a great place to buy stuff, but pretty much everybody's running short on like axle parts. Dexter, Dexter Axle is one of the biggest companies. They made a big power play this year and almost made a monopoly out of axles. And uh, so there's Lippert and there's Dexter. Dexter bought Redneck and they bought a bunch of other companies this year. And so they pretty much took over. And now there's a massive shortage because Dexter can't produce axles to meet the demand of the, the, uh, the amount of market share they have. So Lippert is another good, a good company that like, uh, I think e-trailer has, and uh, some of these farm and homes have. Um, I like Lippert axles, they're just fine. Um, but look and see what your spring centers are. So like for instance, the trailer plans that we have, we have three sizes, they're walk up trailers, not walk on. You, uh, you do a single axle 3,500, single axle 6,000, and a tandem axle 12,000, because those axles are very common. And you can get them in a 48 inch center, a 58 inch spring center, and like a 70 something spring center, 74 typically, 79 something. Um, those are easily, and you just change the frame, the centers on your frame of the trailer to match whatever axle you bought, you know, um, and then reverse engineer. So look and see what like an Orsulin or a tractor supply or somebody like that has. And if you're doing a 500 gallon trailer, and they only have 3,500 pound axles for like, they're usually pretty cheap, like 150 bucks, you know, with springs pre-mounted or maybe they got springs handy. So uh, you can do a tandem axle kit and uh, 
you can you can do like two 3,500 pound axles and have a 7,000 pound trailer. I hope that helps. So uh, with a trailer, if you make the, the cook chamber level, if you're building the cooker, build the cooker body first, level the cook chamber, level your baffle plate, keep everything in tune. And then whenever you build the trailer, you mount the cooker on the trailer, you know, flat with the frame right. of the trailer, right? Then you can just lower the tongue and get a little bit of a pitch right. on that, yep. that whole cooker yep. that way. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Pitmaster Secrets Podcast. Uh, once again, I'm Frank Cox. I'm the founder of Smoker Builder. And uh, what I want to do is extend an invitation to you. If you're looking to get your smoker started, building your first one or your next one, and you have any questions or I can be of any assistance at all, please click the link in this description or just simply type in smokerbuilder.com. That will take you to my website. And on that website, I'm going to get you started on whatever information you need help you get your build, build done faster and easier than you can imagine. So anyway, go to smokerbuilder.com. Also join in our community. And if you found this episode valuable, please like, share with your friends and subscribe to this channel. So anyway, I appreciate you. Until next time, keep your smoke thin and blue and uh, we'll see you later. The one and only, the legend. Bob Moffat. There he is, boy. Oh, my. A.K.A. famous welding instructor. Oh, we tried, man. We tried. <laughs> we've, taught, we've taught a few folks over the day. You better keep it clean. Uh, I like what you, I like what you're saying there. And I, you don't want to be shooting grinder sparks at that fancy face. When's the test going to be? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And, you know, realistically, it's, hey, this is what we're going to do, so let's weld something.